The next section deals with tab management, the ability to split, combine, or transfer items from one check to another. I will go ahead and start a transaction in my food section. And I will <clears throat> add some items to that. Add some drink items to that from the bar. And start a tab. Put the tab name on it. And hit pay later. Of course, during the course of the uh, day or evening while the guest is there, I can bring their tab back up by using the find function. I can add more to that tab if I want to at any time during the time the guest is there. Go in and add a couple burgers. Rare with a side salad. Have two of those. And just a regular salad, Caesar, with balsamic dressing. Now comes time for the guests to pay for this check, and they want to split it. There's several ways to split a check. The simplest and easiest way to split a check is when the guest says, we'd just like to split this evenly X number of ways. To do that, you use the split function. And you then have the option for how many ways do you want to split this check. In this case, we'll use three. And at this point, I would hit print and pay all later. What this will do is it would generate three receipts for me to give to the guest. And it would now create three tabs. If I go and look in the find tab section, you'll see now I have three tabs all under the same name, each with its own transaction ID. When the guest is ready to pay, they will give you their receipt and their method of payment. You'd come in, find that receipt, bring it up, and handle it like a regular payment. Another way to split a check is to split parts of a check. So a guest wants to pay for a certain part of a check. So I'm going to ring up a salad, and some chicken wings, and uh, three diet, two diets. <clears throat> when I hit find and bring up this tab, the guest tells me I would like to pay for the wings and for half of the salad and my friend here is going to pay for the rest of the check. In order to do that, I need to use the move items function. I bring up the original transaction, and I said that I wanted to pay for half of the Caesar salad. So I select the Caesar salad, I pick the percentage, it defaults to half. That will now move half of the salad to a new check, and I also said I wanted to pay for half of the wings. I'm going to move half of the wings over. And I'm going to pay for one of the Diet Cokes. I take that, I move one over. I now have two checks, one for half the salad, half the wings, one Diet, one Shirley Temple, the other one for half the salad, half the wings, and one Diet. Again, at this point, I hit Print and Pay All Later, hit OK. This will now create two checks, one for the salad, the wings, and the one drink, and the other for the salad, the wings, and the two drinks. When the guest is ready to pay, they give me their method of payment. I can use the receipt number that I gave them on the receipt to make sure I bring up the right check, bring the check up, cash it out, just like a normal transaction. Now, at some point in time, the guest may want to combine checks with somebody else. In order to do that, you use the find function. Find one of the checks that you want to combine. So I will find this check and bring it up. And say I want to combine this with another check. I hit combine, and any of the checks that are still open in the system are now available to combine with this check. So I'm going to combine the 
Caesar salad, the wings, and the diet. With this check, it now creates one check instead of two, and I can now pay that out as one transaction. You notice I still have one check left, which was from the very first transaction that I split, that has the chicken tenders and a few of the other items on it that I combined together. Another situation you run into with tabs is when you need to send a server home uh, while they still have open tabs, or you're sw switching shifts and tabs are going to remain open across the shift to a new server or a new bartender. In this example, I am signed in as a server, and if I go to my Find Tabs function, and I only have access to see my tabs, you'll see I have two tabs that are currently open. For whatever reason, I am leaving, and I am not going to cash out these tabs. They're going to be transferred to another employee. So this is permission controlled. In this setup, I am allowing these servers to transfer their own tabs without a manager approval. However, you can set it up that in order to change a tab from one user to another, a manager must approve it. But again, in this case, the servers have the ability to assign their tabs to somebody else when the time comes. So I will open up the receipt screen, go to the change owner function, and you'll see it will bring up any of the tabs that I still have open under this employee. I want to transfer these tabs to someone else. So I can highlight the first one, use the shift button, highlight any of the tabs that I still have, and I can go to the drop down and find the server that I am transferring these tabs to. In this case, Lisa is going to get my tabs because she is still working, and I want to transfer my tabs to her. So I will move down, find Lisa, select her as the new employee who is going to get my tabs, hit OK. And now if I go to find under my name, I no longer have any tabs that are associated with me. I will end my shift, and Lisa will sign in. And when Lisa goes to find tabs, you will see Lisa not only has the tab that she started, she also now has inherited the two tabs that I have transferred to her. And they now become her responsibility to collect when the time comes.